uh, you know, the target group, it excites me a lot. So I'm very uh, pleased to uh, meet you all through this program for the first time. I'm sure we will do it more often. Um, I, I heard that so many of you have registered for this program. Um, that is a great encouragement to us. So on behalf of the center as a executive director and also on behalf of the staff here, I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you uh, participating in this session. And uh, all of us realize that uh, value addition in any product is something that sustains uh, the uh, industry, sustains the income level of the people, and it gives a great opportunity to express creativity. So therefore, uh, having a program on this topic is very relevant. And um, we have the, uh, the most suitable person to deliver a lecture on this or lead the session to this webinar. Uh, we have with us an eminent expert in the person of Dr. Anto Cordelia, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Science, Department of Chemical Science, uh, University Tunku and Abdul Rahman, Malaysia. So we are quite uh, happy to be connected and I'm sure you will all have a very exciting, interesting session and I wish you all, all, wish you all the best and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Over to Tamiloli, sir, for a few words. Tamiloli, sir, are you there? Tamiloli, sir? Srinivasan, sir, is Tamiloli, sir, there? In the ideal country, madam. Tamiloli, sir, we have to go to the seminar. Tamiloli, sir, we have to go to the maximum number of participants. We have to go to the maximum number No, no, sir. Uh, like you can join, sir. Your ID is on Gmail, then, sir. Illa, illa. Your load of the whole varlan is coming. The moderator is telling, like, okay, okay. So uh, you just uh, try to connect us, sir. In between, could I just make you connect you? Like, you come inside, sir. Mm. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Srinivasan, sir, uh, ah, like the meeting on the uh, maximum uh, participants, because it has reached maximum participants, it seems it's not allowing his ID. So can you please check his ID? Ah, ah, okay, madam. Vandana allow pani rai, madam. Ah, Vandana allow pani. Okay, th thank you, father. And now we'll move on. I, we were expecting our whole consultant to address us. So, because he is not unable, like he's unable to enter inside, we'll just connect him later. So, now it's time for the resource person to deliver our address. Welcome, ma'am. Over uh, to the panel. Oh, thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Yes. Uh, Reverend uh, Father and uh, the organizing committee, faculty, and all the participants, a very good afternoon to one and all. So, I am Anto Cordelia, uh, working as... Assistant Professor in University Tunku Abdul Rahman in Malaysia. And I take this opportunity to thank Arupai Center for Policy Research uh, and Arlanandar College for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And I think uh, you are in your golden jubilee year this uh, year, I think. And I'm very proud to be part of it uh, as participating in this webinar. So I hope uh, this would be of some 
uh, I, I whatever the inputs that I give will be of some benefit to at least a few of you who would like to take up uh, plantation, especially to be an entrepreneur, young uh, students who wanted to enter into uh, plantation or agriculture. So this would be the best time and the best investment for you. Uh, so thank you one and all. And my special thanks to Dr. Mabel, who was the key person in organizing this. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I think, uh, can I move on with the session? Okay, I'll share. Yes, madam. Uh, could you please enable screen sharing? Uh, enable, madam. Now enable. Uh. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So uh, this is our university. This is a grand hall where we conduct our graduation and most of the functions. So this architecture is very famous. It is in the Chinese architecture. And this has won uh, many awards for its architectural design. And I belong to the Center of Biodiversity Research. And for any inputs, you can just email me. All right. Okay. So uh, this topic, uh, value addition in coconut, uh, it attracted me so much because I'm very fond of coconut. Basically, any preparation with coconut, yes. There is a no from me. So basically, uh, I'm very, uh, I love coconuts. And coconut palm, this is one of the most useful palm in the world. And uh, there's an interesting story behind the name coconut. This uh, name derived uh, from the Portuguese sailors because they were looking into the coconut shell where they have the three small holes on the coconut. So to them, it resembled the human face. So they dubbed the fruit as cocoa, meaning a grinning face or a grin or a grimace. And later on, the English, they added the word nut to this coconut. So this is how coconut got its name. And technically, uh, this coconuts, they are not nuts. They are droops. They belong to droops. Okay. So let us see some statistics about coconut before we move on to why there is a need for value addition. So coconut production by countries and Indonesia is the leading uh, producer of coconut, followed by Philippines and India is ranked third. And then it is followed by Sri Lanka, Brazil, Vietnam, and so on. So we are ranked third in the world. And I think Malaysia is ranked 12th. But the problem is, when it comes to India, though we are the third largest producer all over the world, we are still confined to only the copra and uh, using coconut for uh, basically our culinary purposes. So uh, there are markets, there are avenues by which you can earn more, you can improve your economy, as well as you can increase your trade or your export through the value added products. So that was why I think uh, this is the right time this seminar came. So when you look into the statistics of India, India is the third largest and it produces over 119 million tons of uh, coconut every year. Uh, when we compare with the states, uh, Kerala tops the Indian coconut production, which is followed by Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. And for your information, I think Kerala was uh, last time when they took uh, the statistics, they were in the third spot and they regained the top spot uh, around 2018. So now they are the leading uh, producers within India. And coconut plantation, they are more important to the agricultural industry in India as well, and on the whole, to the economy of India. And they are the ones which have uh, more avenues for cottage industries. So they are very important to rural uh, Indians. Now, what do we mean by value added products? So this uh, United States Department of Agriculture, they define value added products as 
a change in the physical state or form of the product, such as uh, your processing, uh, milling of wheat into flour, or you're making anything out of uh, making a fruit into a jam or jellies or squashes. Okay, so all this, when there is a change in the physical state, uh, then it is defined as a value added product. So by uh, doing this, it enhances the value as well as uh, this, you can have it as more commodity and you can have an identity for preserved marketing system. So that is the idea of value added products. Okay, so now why should we go for value addition in coconuts? So normally, as I said before, in India, coconut crop economy is mainly linked with fresh coconut or copra. Over 40% of these total nuts they are consumed in the form of either fresh or tender coconuts. And about 50% of the nuts are converted into copra and consumed as coconut meal and coconut oil. And a very small proportion is processed as desiccated coconut and other uh, products. So though we have multitude opportunities for product diversification, the value of coconut in India is still confined only to copra or coconut oil. So we have to break this uh, link and then we have to develop and popularize more value added products uh, being one of the leading uh, producers. Okay, coconut is one of the uh, plant or the trees that has every single uh, part in the coconut tree is very useful for human life. That is why we call it as Kalp Viriksha or Kalpaga Viriksha, which means a tree of heaven because it's having a multitude of uses. So we have coconut biomass, which is used as an alternative source of renewable energy. The mid ribs of the leaves, they are used to make brooms, uh, baskets, fish traps, etc. The husk, uh, so that is a uh, fiber. So this is made into hundreds of products. The pith, uh, which is the soil conditioner, and also it acts as a rooting medium. We have the coconut shell, no need to say it is being used uh, for making, right from making into uh, many uh, art items. It is also being used to produce shell powder, shell charcoal, activated carbons, and many other utility products. Coconut shell powder, again, uh, is being used, used in plywoods, uh, in making laminated boards, and they are used as fillers in synthesizing this uh, resin glues or mosquito coils, or they are also used as filler in agarbati industries. And activated carbon, which is the non-graphite form of carbon. So this is uh, basically used in the purification of water, the bleaching of uh, vegetable oils, and also uh, is used in gas mask. And tender coconut, we know it is a very nutritious health drink. And we have uh, tender coconut water plus the water from the mature uh, nuts. And these are used in the preparation of vinegar, jelly, and palm wine. And coconut kernel. Again, uh, there is a most important constituent in the diet. We have coconut oil cake, which after everything is being extracted, it still acts as a very good kettle feed. And coconut oil, we know that is the most uh, important. It can be used as a food ingredient or can be used as hair oil or for uh, skin care body oil. And coconut oil, they are very good sources of most of the fatty acids, especially C12 to C18. So these uh, fatty acids are very much in demand from the oleochemical industry. And then we have this nira, or the unfermented toddy. So it is a sweet sap, uh, which has been tapped from the unopened spadix of the coconut palm. And this is a very uh, delicious health drink. And this again contains a host of nutrients. And then we have uh, coconuts. They are used in as lubricants, as surfactants, as plasticizers. And uh, they are also nowadays used as metal working fluids and greases. 
uh, neera other than uh, being a very good nutritious sauce this is also used in preparing or in the manufacturing of many value added products like your jaggery palm syrup and palm sugar so every part has got its own use so that is why we call this as a tree in heaven okay uh, so when we talk about coconut water so this is a projected coconut water market worldwide so you can see the demand keeps increasing uh, so it is projected that it is it will be still more so there is more need uh, for this tender coconut water so what are the benefits that we get from the tender coconut water so this is one of the best eco friendly and refreshing drink and it is considered as an isotonic beverage because it contains equal amounts of electrolytes along with uh, water and this when there is a dehydration or uh, any other uh, loss of fluid from your body so this will help you to have the same level of electrolyte balance as in our blood so this is also called as fluid of life because it helps to promote anti aging healthy cell growth and rehydration so the uh, nutrients that are present in tender coconut are apart from the sugars glucose fructose we also have minerals like or the electrolytes like potassium sodium and minerals like calcium phosphorus iron copper and magnesium and they also contain most of the amino acids especially arginine alanine cysteine and serine and these amino acids are found in a greater amounts than those that are found in cow's milk which is said to be a complete protein as well and apart from this they are also host of vitamin c and all b vitamins and other uh, biological growth factors and enzymes so uh, there is an interesting news about this tender coconut so in earlier days it was used to treat cholera epidemic patients as well as uh, those who were injured in world war 2 especially in indonesia and sri lanka instead of uh, giving intravenous fluids they started to give this tender coconut water intravenously in order to recover them from severe dehydration so that is uh, the benefit that our olden days our ancestors have already known and now this tender coconut has suddenly uh, become the fastest growing beverage category worldwide especially in american and european countries and it has also become very popular among athletes and those who are very conscious about their health and those who are living in the urban community especially in all the developed countries so those uh, major importers of tender coconut water are uk netherlands canada mexico united arab emirates japan korea and australia so they are the major importers of uh, tender coconut okay so that's a fresh tender coconut water so wherever there is a need uh, now we have to preserve and give a value addition so this packaged tender coconut water is now very popular especially uh, among the philippines uh, indonesians malaysians and those who are in thailand we here we very commonly get this tender coconut water which is packaged in either uh cartons or in cans so packaging of this tender coconut water in different forms like pouches cartons pet bottles tetra packs and aluminum cans where you can uh, carry very easily so they have made sure to retain its flavor for a period of 3 months under all the ambient conditions and 6 months if it is uh, being refrigerated so this has become very uh, very much popular nowadays so products are available in both the domestic as well as international markets and then we have this minimally processed tender coconut so you can see because in any tender coconut the outer shell is what gives bulk 
So that is uh, that has more weight than especially the part where we get the tender coconut from. So this process involves dipping. They de-husk the tender coconut in a solution of 0.5% uh, citric acid and 0.5% potassium metabisulfate. And this is done for three minutes. And once they do this, this can be stored up to 24 days in any uh, refrigerated conditions at five to seven degrees centigrade. So the major advantage of um, minimally processing is it can be transported to distant places and it can be served chill like any other uh, soft drinks or your colas, whatever you drink. And you can optimize the size of these tender coconuts and this can facilitate using plastic crates and insulated chill boxes. So that will minimize your transport hassle and it will be easy for storage. The shelf life of this minimally processed tender coconut is 45 days in three to 60 degrees Celsius or three weeks in seven to 100 degrees C. And uh, this is very famous in Thailand. So here the young coconuts, they will be trimmed treated, packaged, and you can just open like any other can. And it is, it comes with a straw and spoon. And this is, uh, I think even in Malaysia, this is very, very uh, popular. And it is being exported to Australia, Europe, uh, Japan, America, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. The other tender coconut products uh, are Snowball tender coconut. So all these uh, are the newly improved or value added products. So this is again the tender coconut without the husk, shell and the testa. So this uh, resembles a ball shape and it is pure white in color. So this ball will contain tender coconut water and this can be just uh, drunk just by inserting a straw through the top white tender coconut kernel. But uh, this technology is yet to take off commercially. And then we have uh, fruit juice blender tender coconut water. So tender coconut is blended with other fruits. So it, it used to compromise for the different antioxidants or the different nutrients. Each of them can complement each other. So most commonly it is being blended with pomegranate, blue grapes, pineapples, mango, and lemon juices. And this can keep safe for up to six months. So those were the value added products with regard to the young tender coconuts. Now we will see what are the products that we can get out of this matured coconut water. So we have uh, now the bottled coconut water, which can be stored for three months at any ambient temperature. And uh, if you are uh, having a liking to soda, so you can also, this um, bottled co tender coconut can be carbonated and used as a beverage as well. So either carbonated or non-carbonated. And then we have uh, coconut water beverages. So there are a combination of uh, fruits and other uh, mixes to this tender coconut. So it comes with variety of flavors. So this will upgrade the flavor of mature coconut, uh, coconut water, so that it is being supplemented with additives and sugar, but it still preserves its own uh, taste. So it is the process of heat, pasteurization, and permitted colors. So these kind of products, they are uh, very much popular in Philippines because Philippines is again one of the leading producers. So they are now into... Uh, making more of these value added products and letting it into commercial markets. And then we have this uh, coconut water concentrate. So uh, this is done by using spray evaporation technique. So the advantage is that it will retain all the original characteristics of this uh, coconut juice and the shelf life is about six months to 24 months. So that is concentrate. And then we have frozen coconut water. So this, uh, once they froze or freeze this coconut water, they can be used for the production of carbonated or uh, non-carbonated coconut beverages. And 
they are also being successfully used in brewery industry so that is the uh, main uh, purpose of this frozen coconut water and then uh, this is uh, netto di coco so this is uh, probably a like coconut jelly this is a gelatinous product and in malaysia we have this very common in all the supermarkets and this is one of the uh, important ingredients when they prepare fruit salads or when they add it to ice creams uh, so it is very common and it is very delicious so this is a gelatinous product this is prepared from again a matured coconut water and this is uh, done by the action of cellulose forming bacteria namely the acetobacter aceti with a subspecies xylenium so this is a best ingredient or an excellent ingredient for all the fruit salads pickles fruit cocktails uh, drinks ice creams sherbets and other recipes and now they have uh, gone into the markets uh, of usa europe uae japan taiwan and korea and again philippines indonesia and malaysia they are the leading uh, producers and they are the ones uh, who hold majority of the markets for this uh, netta di coco and coconut jelly just like your fruit jellies so they convert this uh, coconut water into jelly and it can be stored in glass bottles and this can be kept up to 180 days and uh, the other uh, value added product is coconut vinegar so this is again a uh, fortification of this coconut water with sugar and then it is being fermented by adding an inoculum of yeast uh, and then the mother vinegar and oxidation and acidification process so coconut vinegar is again very popular Uh, desiccated coconuts so this is actually the white kernel of coconut so this is disintegrated and they are desiccated to a moisture content of less than 3% so because most of the moisture is removed it can keep for a long time and this still in a uh, white in color and this is the most commercial product uh, which has demand all over the world especially in all the confectionery and food industries because they are now used as ingredients of fillings for chocolates candies cookies and then uh, it is also used uncooked or as decoration for most of these baked items or uh, it can be sprinkled over ice creams and in any uh, toasted short eats or short breads so desiccated coconut is very popular and sri lanka philippines indonesia and malaysia they are the major producing countries for desiccated coconut and then comes india fiji tonga ivory coast and brazil so they also produce desiccated coconuts but in small quantities and the other uses of coconut kernel is they can be uh, made into coconut chips so this is again a ready to eat snack and this is basically prepared from 9 to 10 month old coconuts so again dehydration is a process uh, whereby the moisture is removed and the intermediate moisture coconut kernel is used for making this chips and then we have this coconut milk so these are all protein water emulsions so this is obtained by squeezing the fresh grated coconut kernel so the undiluted and the diluted uh, both we refer to them as coconut milk and the concentrated form as coconut cream so uh, philippines thailand indonesia western samoa sri lanka and malaysia so they are now full swing into the commercial production of these products and india to some extent they are uh, into this market Indonesia is a leading exporter and followed by Sri Lanka, Thailand and Philippines. So normally uh, we Indians are mostly used to taking fresh coconut milk. So but now in order to have a value addition and to expand the market value this has been now commercialized. And then we have this coconut skim milk. So this is a solution for the soluble components of coconut after the cream uh, cream is separated in a cream uh, separator so this coconut skim milk is used for the production of uh, 
products like spray dried powder, coconut honey, coconut jam, and sweetened condensed milk. And this is also used as a substitute for the preparation of fermented beverage concentrate. And it is a very good source of vegetable casein. So normally, uh, the gastrointestinal disturbances in infants, so they can be treated by feeding them with coconut milk, uh, which shows that skin milk having the same protein level, that is 1.6%, which mimics or which is equivalent to the mother's milk and they are well utilized by the infants. So any gastrointestinal disturbances in infants, I think this is what even our grandparents or uh, great grandparents also follow. So we have uh, a multitude of products. If I go into detail of every product, I think uh, it will take another one hour. So I will just uh, cut short. What are the other products that you can uh, prepare or you can uh, have as value added products. So they are sweetened condensed skim milk. They are very popular. They can replace your normal uh, sweetened condensed milk and they are more delicious. And we have this coconut cream. We have uh, spray dried coconut milk powder. We have coconut syrup, coconut jam. Coconut jam is very famous in Indonesia, Malaysia and Philippines, I think. We call them as kaya. So it it has got a wonderful taste and we also have coconut yogurt so which can uh, be a, a very good substitute for vegans who don't even uh, take dairy products and uh, we are very familiar with virgin coconut oil and this has now become a craze uh, worldwide especially among the europeans and americans uh, they have again multitude of uh, benefits and we have coconut margarine, we have coconut mayonnaise, coconut flour, and we have the dietary fiber, which is being extracted uh, from the coconut residue. So they are given as supplements. And we also have coconut honey. So these are the value added products. So other than apart from the normal oil, we can convert them into these different kinds of products and which are very much acceptable in the international market. We have coconut cheese, we have a fermented coconut beverage concentrate and this uh, coconut sap is again uh, very much useful, we call it a snira and the uh, fermented one is called a stoddy or uh, we in general it is called as palm wine. Okay, so they are again very popular and this nira unfermented uh, coconut sap or nira is basically uh, used for the preparation of or conversion into jaggery or palm sugar. And we also have refined palm sugar. So all these can be produced. And we have this uh, treacle. So this is the unfermented toddy, which is being boiled to produce this thick paste. Okay, so this is called treacle and this is being used as uh, like how you use your sauce in the preparation of meals. Same way, this is also being used. And we have a different other uh, combination of products. So any food product, when you have this coconut, it definitely enhances the sweetness, flavor, and taste of the particular foods. So whatever the examples I give here is very common. And uh, uh, for being in Malaysia for the past 15 years, I've seen uh, the Malay people or the Malaysians, they take more of coconut products. We, they incorporate coconut, the grated coconuts in almost all recipes and desserts. They make wonderful desserts. Uh, same goes to Indonesians as well. So you can make cookies, chocolates, uh, laddus, and then these cupcakes, they can uh, act as a decoration there. And then uh, this is called this onde onde, where you have uh, the glutinous ball inside, you have the palm sugar, and then you just uh, marinate it with this grated coconuts. A very excellent uh, dessert. And uh, this is the appam. Okay, so that is inside you have grated coconuts and palm sugar and coconut candy. So all these are very famous delicacies. So other than the edible parts, we also have value added products from the non-edible parts or the coconut byproducts. So coconut byproducts 
normally this coconut shell powder so the dried coconut shell is being powdered and that is used in a variety of applications right from they are used in plywood and laminated board industries so this is being used as a phenolic extruder and as a filler in the synthetic resin glues mosquito coils and other bathy industries and uh, this is basically they are they have more advantage or this is more superior as a substitute for bark powder or for furol and peanut shell powder because of their uniformity in quality and the chemical uh, composition and when it comes to coconut shell powder they have got better absorption property and they are more resistant to fungal attack philippines indonesia and sri lanka they already uh, lead the major markets in exporting coconut shell powder whereas this coconut shell powder manufacturing is not still very much organized in india so this has got a very good international market so probably we also should think of exporting this coconut shell powder to the internet charcoal so this is manufactured by burning the shells of the fully matured coconuts with limited supply of air and then it is sufficient uh, for carbonization so the air that is uh, usually less and which is sufficient for the carbonization process so it does not destroy the whole thing in the modern waste heat recovery unit the heat that is generated by burning this coconut shell uh, is used for drying copra as well as they are uh, used in making other by products and then we have this activated carbon again as i said before it is a non graphite form of carbon and this could be produced from any carbonaceous material so coconut shell based activated carbon is considered superior uh, compared to those that is obtained from other sources because of their pore size they have very small uh, pore structure so this will make it more effective for the absorption of gas or vapor as well as this is more efficient in removing color and odor of compounds so normally uh, activated carbon is used in the refineries and it is used for bleaching vegetable oils and uh, they are used to purify water they are used in the recovery of solvents and other vapors and especially this is very much useful in the recovery of gold as well as gas mask for the protection against uh, all the toxic gases so this is one of the major by product and uh, because they are very good sources of fatty acids so coconut based oleochemicals are very popular so they are uh, especially derived from the fatty acids or the glycerol or the methyl esters or fatty alcohols so coconut the advantage is it contains the maximum amount of glycerin so because it is a natural glycerin this has a very high efficiency when it is used in a pharmaceutical industry or in cosmeceuticals uh, in the by the cosmetic industry and there are uh, downstream methods by which various chemical derivatives or derived uh, basically alkalino amides medium chain triglycerides etc so all these could be manufactured again because the fatty acids of coconut oil they are fraction to obtain these by products they have a variety of application in a varied uh, number of industries and the interesting part is uh, coconut biodiesel so this walter uh, and howard huang so they already synthesized this coconut biodiesel so they used one pot of methanol to five pots of coconut oil and use lye as a catalyst and the process of trans esterification will convert this coconut oil into coconut biodiesel and this coconut biodiesel has a viscosity which is similar to the normal conventional uh, diesel fuel we have and during the course of this process of trans esterification they also produce glycerin 
So this which is being used to make soap. So they test run this coconut biodiesel and they reported that it runs extremely well with only one third of the emissions compared to the normal petroleum based uh, biodiesel. But the major problem they face is the necessity of using methanol in the process, uh, especially trans esterification process. Because methanol is toxic, it is explosive, it is dangerous to transport. And it is also not readily available in uh, rural communities, especially in developing countries. So therefore, it's still open, modifying this diesel engine to burn pure coconut oils to make it a more uh, prudent approach. So once they heat this coconut oil to 80 degrees uh, Celsius, the viscosity is similar to that of coconut oil, allowing it to be burned directly in a diesel engine. So uh, if you have to find an alternative for methanol, and if that alternative could compensate for uh, all those, the negatives that we have, definitely those biodiesel that is produced from coconut will be a boom to uh, the industry and it is more eco-friendly. And the non-edible uses of coconut oil. So uh, other than the normal fatty acids, Coconut is a best source of lauric acid and myristic acids. So they contain capric, caprylic, caproic, and palmitic, stearic, oleic acids. So all these acids now find a lot of application in cosmetic industries. So they have replaced all the other substitutes and they can be directly used in producing these cosmetic products because they are very good uh, C12 and C14 fatty acids, they are very good for your skin. Other than the oleochemicals, we also have cocoa chemicals. So these chemicals that is derived from the byproducts of coconut oil, they are mainly used to manufacture soaps, surfactants, plastics, surface coatings, and they are very good lubricants. And uh, at present, USA, Germany, and United Kingdom, and Japan. So they account for around 75% of all the total non-edible usage of uh, coconut oil. So because those who produce, they appreciate less. Only those who do not produce more, they know the value of uh, this coconut oil and their byproducts. So coconut soaps are uh, getting more popular nowadays because they account for 25% of the total oil consumption and 50% of all the non-edible consumption because they are uh, skin friendly and they can uh, retain moisture in your skin. And hence these soaps made out of coconut chemicals, they are very much appreciated and very popular. So surfactants, they are surface active agents. So they will help to modify the surface tension of aqueous systems uh, by changing or because of their molecular uh, structures. So these surfactants normally are used in all the household detergents, uh, petroleum, foods, plastics, rubber, textile, cosmetics, in leather industry, in paper industry. It can be used as dry cleaning agent in as well as can be used as paint and cements. So they are very good surfactants and their market value is high. And these chemicals can also be used in the manufacture of vinyl plastics. So they are added to as plasticizers to aid in this vinyl fabrication. So those plasticizers that is being obtained from the cocoa chemicals, they offer better advantage uh, as they are very stable. They do not uh, bleach the colors and hence the degradation during fabrication and use is more. So they are highly preferred in plastic industry. And there is another compound called monolaurin from coconut oil. So this contains 44 to 52% of lauric acid. And they are the potential source for producing monolaurin, or in short, we call it as lauricidin. 
So this loricidin has been uh, now found to reduce HIV uh, infection. So further uh, development into a drug is still under research, but preliminary results have shown that they are found to reduce HIV infection. And uh, all those tender coconut waste can be converted and can be used as uh, biodegradable products. So the pulp and handmade paper uh, are made using this tender coconut fiber and that is used for wrapping, uh, packing and making all the corrugated uh, containers. So when you do this, you are making it as eco-friendly. So now we have a ban for all the plastic bags and other things. So this could be the best alternative. And other than those chemicals, we have the coconut wood products. So we know uh, the multitude of uses with this coconut wood products. This coconut wood uh, normally is used for making roofs, uh, rafters, purlins, beams, banisters, etc. in all those uh, coconut growing areas. And it is also used for the construction of temporary sheds and sheds for cattle and uh, for any workshop buildings or farm buildings or sometimes in uh, constructing rural bridges. So they are very much useful. And the coconut stem, which is taken from the lower age group and upper half of the mature and over mature trees. They are used as firewood. The timber, again, because of the lasting grains, they excel other wood in their beauty. So a lot of uh, beauty products or art products are produced using this timber that is uh, derived from the coconut palm. And it is also used as a decorative piece. And uh, in most countries, like in uh, Philippines or in Indonesia, you can see this coconut wood is used for making wall panels, floor tiles, and handicrafts. And uh, grocery pallets, especially in Philippines, they manufacture this grocery pallets from coconut wood. They are very sturdy, they are strong, and eco-friendly. So that is the advantage of using them. Instead of going in for all the uh, coated materials. And then we have the coconut leaf. So we know coconut leaf is basically used as a thatch and used as a shading for seedlings or for mulching the nursery beds and can also be used as a decorative uh, piece. And these coconut leaves are also a feed for elephants. And uh, those laminates and panels that is made as uh, or used as a partition material between the walls or as paneling materials. Again, they are also made by pressing these coconut leaves uh, with an adhesive. And uh, most of these countries, they started to make these paper trays and waste paper baskets. They, you can see the picture. It has got a wide range of applications using these leaves and they are very attractive. And dry leaves, normally they use as fuel and household kettle sheds and covering of the retting pits. If you want to have a temporary compound wall or partition wall of a making baskets, these leaves are very good uh, source. And the leaf midrib, they are used for making brooms, baskets, fish traps, and all the fancy articles. And in some countries, the tongue cleaners are also made using these leaf midribs. And coconut husk is the raw material for making coir uh, products and one of the major raw materials in the coir industry. And some places they also use this as a domestic fuel and as a fuel in copra kilns. So they also use this in coconut gardens. So because they preserve the soil moisture and they also used as surface mulch in all the coconut basins. So these are the different uh, products that has been developed using coconut husk and coir. And coir can be also used as geotextiles. We call it as geotextiles or coir buvastra. 
So this is used uh, as one of the uh, major source to control the soil erosion and consolidate the soil. So it functions by breaking up and dissipate the energy of flowing water. So they make it very strong. This is again used uh, wherever we, uh, places there is more chances of getting the soil erosion. These coir geotextiles are used, uh, especially on hilly slopes, river banks, and those areas that are vulnerable for soil erosion. Coir pit. So this is the byproduct that we get after we extract the coir fiber. And this pit is an excellent soil conditioner and a rooting medium. So it is used uh, as a soil enhancer. This contains about 70% of the husk itself. So now cocoa pit has become a growing market in the world. So they make these pit blocks and discs uh, using this coir pit. So they are very strong and eco-friendly. So when we see all these products, what we see through the roof. So what is the current scenario of these uh, coconut products in the market, both in domestic as well as in the international market. So what we saw was the craze for coconut has now reached new heights. And the health food retailers, they are struggling to meet the demands, which means the needs are more than what we produce. So uh, we know consumers are now ready to spend any amount for uh, healthy products. So this coconut is first in line. They are uh, ready to spend more for coconut derived waters, flowers and dairy re replacement products. And now, because there is a ban for this colas, uh, Pepsis and other things, people have now shifted their interest towards drinking coconut water, not only in India, even in uh, other countries. So there is a strong demand for this as well as for coconut milk. As I said, coconut water can be a very good substitute for blood plasma because of its high sugar level and because of the electrolytes that is present. So this makes it possible to add water to the bloodstream, which is similar to how an intravenous solution works uh, in modern medicine. So that is why they use this as one of the uh, best methods to come out of dehydration uh, in the ancient period. So... The best thing is the coconut, the top coconut suppliers, they are struggling to meet the increasing demands of global economy uh, through this coconut. So, as uh, responsible uh, citizens and those who are the future of India or in any other country, so what have you to do? Just an example. One acre of coconut plantation is said to give approximately 7 lakhs uh, rupees profit per annum, which is uh, close to 60,000 rupees salary a month. So instead of working for someone, why not we choose to be entrepreneurs? Get loans, buy an acre of plantation. You have to but, uh, invest for two to three years and then you will get a solid income. And this is one of the lucrative venture at the present. And this also holds a great prospect for the future. When we are under this COVID-19 pandemic now, we are left to reshape the world. So like how our ancestors did. We must learn to heed the call of the land, the rhythm of the seasons, the social bonds that hold us together. So get back to land. The problem with developed and developing nations is the attention or the priority they give for rocket science or for other uh, industrial development has not been given for agriculture. So the agriculture sector is the one that is being always neglected. So this COVID has taught us a lesson. We have to be self-sustained. Once uh, all the borders are closed, there is no export or import. So sustainability comes here so let us try to be sustainable and uh, value 
the effort of farmers, healers, as well as the teachers. Agriculture infrastructure will create more and more employment opportunities because we can be the king only in our own place. So when there is any crisis or when there is an emergency, though we work outside, we will be considered as uh, an immigrant. We will be sent out. So anything comes, the first affected will be those immigrants. So if you consider agriculture as a prospective uh, future, definitely yes. And it can help you with sustainability. But just that you have to know the recent advancements or developments. So there is a lot of scope for research when it comes to coconut in all fields, either engineering or agriculture or food science uh, or in business. So everywhere you have a wide scope for agriculture or for coconuts. So this was the interesting quote that I uh, came across. So coconut milk is the only thing on this planet that comes identically to mother's milk. So Dustin Hoffman says, the two basic items necessary to sustain life are sunshine and coconut milk. So enough, get enough sunshine and get enough coconut milk. You can uh, live long. So that is the take home message. Thank you uh, for this wonderful opportunity. If you have any questions, I think uh, the organizers can pass the questions. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. So before we move on to the question session, so actually we I just wanted to invite uh, our coal consultant. Actually, this Arupai Center for Policy Research is an extension unit of Arulanandar College. Okay. So this is collaborated with Commonwealth of Learning Canada. So our coal consultant, Dr. Tamiloli, he will also join with all with us in all our programs and he'll address. So I would like to invite Dr. Tamiloli just to address. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, just tell a few words about our coal, ACPR activities and the lifelong learning and the importance of coconut. Why we have introduce this value addition uh, in coconut in this present webinar. Sir, Tamiloli, sir, are you here? Yes, I am very much there, uh, Mabel. Yes. Uh, yes, welcome, sir. Ma'am, close the sharing, the PPT presentation. That is. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Nice. Sir. Yeah, good morning uh, to all of you. SCPR, AAC. Uh, Mrs. Mabel and, and her team for organizing this wonderful webinar, which is very much a topic which is very much relevant in general and uh, particularly in the post-COVID context. And uh, let me try to share some of my thoughts basically about why we are talking about this value addition more and more and more uh, in the last few years or maybe in the last one decade, more than uh, we discussed and talked about it in the past. And uh, I'll just want to ask Mabel, how much the participants are comfortable with uh, Tamil? Let me go to Tamil so that uh, it will be more communicative and also we discuss issues which are pertaining to ground level. So my, my 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 top my discussion or my presentation would be more from the point of view of agricultural families who are producing coconut and the whole uh, uh, interest why AAC is taking up this value addition topic is because you are closely working with uh, an FPO which is prominently or main product, main main produce, agriculture produce of this FPO is coconut. So your intention to really build the capacity of this farmer uh, is to increase the market, increase the profit, increase the, increase the uh, income level of the farmers ultimately. So if there could be farmers also in this, so they will be getting benefited if I speak in Tamil. So can I shift over to 
Yeah, uh, maybe sir, it can be bilingual, a little bit bilingual. Little bit bilingual. Yes. Uh, yes, I'll try my level best. I try my level best. Thank you. So, Thank Adipadaila, Elarkum, and not a caller when I come in the Talaipo Arlan and the Kalori, Arlan and the Kalori Vandu. It's a Arlan and the Kalori Vandu or Munu Daranam. Every one then Vermane on the Kalori Kulara, Hupariculara, Manavalk Solitara than the Tavartha. Vasa helped it a Naradia Poi, allowed a Prechenic letter in Jeter. Adayum one then another Tangalodea, part of the Tangalorik and Gondu to Puranga. Very welcome. Extension to extension of insult on the very welcome Mayangal, Mundanan Mayangal on the Kalurilla Yangit Rikra So Urvahia and the Irandayam one then another Kalvi Kalvi one then narrative was either Kandala or Pine Padala. Allah the Vivasa Hill Kitter and the Mehamakyama, either Thurinjit, other than the Kalviki, Solitarata Kundu to Pola, in the Madriana or Kalaway, or a mixture Anahumraila, A. C. Arlan the Kalori, Sail Petitra, and the Hail Ada and the Kalurikan or Serap Pamsam, or Mudhale eleven the Rural Development Science, MSc in Rural Development Science, Abdin Mandur, Harda Priva Vachirkanga. In the Uraha Varachi and Bada Vandi Avar or Arivial Ridia Paka and Rikarade Adan Molam and the Uraha Valachi Yavar Yadatha Silva, Angerka Kudia and the Gramapura Kudumangalak, Uvasai Kulikal, Uvasai Hilke, Yanda Hale, Pine Bada Kudia or Allah Arivale Avar Pine Bada Tavada, Abdinra and the or Mukiaman and Okatle in the Kaluri, Silvati Rikarade and the Hale and the Kaluri Oda, Muir Chikka. My lower one than an or Utulipa, Kodaka and the Mahamukium, and the Vahaila now on the Commonwealth of Learning of Insular in the Intergovernmental Organization. Panna to Arasagal Wanga Wanga Mohika Kudia in the Punaridia Talaipukurla, non in the Meeting Lavanda in the in the webinar. Pajundu Gala Vurmara, Sela Mukia Saidi Holoda, Murchagra, Mother Lavanda, Krama Portalaka Vasai Hurke, Thoranda Ipo Solitra or Vishianana, Vasai Manda, Nadan Morela, Vasai Hilir to save other Kana, or Uhanda Valva da Rama Ila Ya Ila bin Sonina, Vasai Kadal or Palanami Ila, Laba Mille, Verum Murepuna. The Kalangalama was cycle solid or other. Anna Vandur Nan Nan in the Pata and Hilkumbu Narpada in the Angel Kumbu Patama Kuda on the Tanoda Tavik, one of the Tavik Vulaywanga, Purlo Laywanga, Anala on the one of the Tavay Nala Angel Kondan the Rayward and the Tandi Vermanam, Sunday Kikundu to Porta, Bin Patana, Korachalo on the Angel Vermana Karcha. But food security in the one of the under the overlook here in the Vasaikuramanga. Payanachana alone the commercial crop in the Sunday Kikundu or Purgala Upatibundra, Pairil Kamariach. Is the Nala on the wheat lavanda, the one of Padha Pompeditia upon the nutritional security in Solrom and the Utachat to Padha Pompeditia, said a Sunday Kikundu to Pona, a door Nala Velakarikuma Abdin Solita, Velakurta. Other than the Taviana Poru Wangala in Patina, Sunday Gondo Kudukumbo, Mega Kurin the Verman and the Grekazam. And Valayer there, Sunday Kikundu to be Kurkrang, all of them. Is not a summon the Patronor Vishing and Anna, Munbir on the Vosai Talaya, Palava Melangana, Munbir on the Vosai Morella, and the Parambre Vosai Morella, Modelida di Hamarka. Ipo on the Modelida di Hama Sayavendirka. Where they Wanga the Lerund. Whether you want the moon of it, and whether they put a chip, whether they market less and the other one. Thoder on the Patina, Woru or a sail border hill, was I on the Thoder on the Thunder of Moderate of a Kevin Director. Tonuta in the Sadi and Vosai Hill Kitta, Nadatara Kuru Siru Vosai Hill Kitta. Petil and the Pana at the Tupoi, Sandela, 
அந்த இடுபொருட்கள் இன்புட்ஸ்ன்னு சொல்ற இருபொருட்கள் வாங்குற நிலைமை கிடையாது ஸோ கடன் தான் அது விவசாய கூட்டுறவு வாங்கி கடனா இருக்கலாம் அல்லது மணி லெண்டர்ஸ்ன்னு சொல்ற அந்த ஊருக்கு வர ஊர்களுக்கு வந்து அதிக பட்ச வட்டிக்கு கடன் கொடுக்கிற கந்துக்காரர்கள் அல்லது இடைத்தரகர்கள் மூணாவது கட்டுக்கு அவங்களுடைய பங்களிப்பும் அதி அதிகம் இந்த முதலீடுக்கு கடன் கொடுக்கறது இடைத்தரகர்கள் இவங்க கிட்ட தான் வாங்கி முதலீடு போட வேண்டியிருக்கிறது அது இன்னொரு மேஜர் டாபிக் அது பிறகு பேசணும் ஸோ கொண்டே மார்க்கெட்ல கொடுக்கும் போது வந்துன்னா அவங்களுக்கு தேவையான அளவுக்கு வருமானம் கிடைக்கிறது இல்லை இது வந்து யாரும் சொல்லி தெரிய வேண்டியது கிடையாது இது வந்து உலகம் அறிந்த வெளிப்படையான உண்மை இப்ப இந்த மாதிரியான சூழ்நிலையிலதான் இத வா கொஞ்சம் விவசாயிக்கு சேர்ந்து வருமானம் வர்றதுக்கான வாய்ப்புகள் எதனா இருக்குதா அப்படின்னு யோசிக்கும் போதுதான் இந்த மதிப்பு கூட்டல் வேல்யூ அடிஷன் மதிப்பு கூட்டல்ங்கிற இந்த கருத்தாக்கம் வந்து இருக்குன்னு நான் சொன்ன மாதிரி கடந்த ஒரு பத்து பதினைந்து வருடங்களா அதிக பேச்சு அதிக அதிகமா பேச்சுல வந்துட்டு இருக்கிறது கலந்துரையாடல்கள்லயோ அல்லது ஒர்க் ஷாப்ஸ் வெப் செமினார்ஸ் ரிசர்ச் பேப்பர்ஸ் இந்த மாதிரி நிறைய கவர்மெண்ட் ப்ரோக்ராம்ஸ் இதுல வந்துட்டு இருக்கிறது இல்ல குறிப்பா இப்ப வந்து என்னன்னா கடந்த ஒரு ஒரு ஐந்து ஆண்டுகளா வந்து விவசாய உற்பத்தி குழுமங்கள் ஃபார்மர்ஸ் ப்ரொடியூசர் ஆர்கனைசேஷன்ஸ் நபார்ட் ப்ரொமோட்டட் ஸ்டேட் எஸ்எஃப்ஏசி இருக்கிறது நேஷனல் எஸ்எஃப்ஏசி இந்த விவசாயிகள் ஒருங்கிணைச்சு செய்யக்கூடிய அந்த அமைப்புகள் இவங்க எல்லாம் வந்து அதிக அளவுல விவசாய உற்பத்தி குழுமங்களை உருவாக்கிட்டு இருக்காங்க இப்ப இந்த கோவிட் இந்த ட்வெண்ட்டி டூ தௌ ட்வெண்ட்டி லேக்ஸ் க்ரோர் ப்ராஜெக்ட்ல கூட பாத்தீங்கன்னா டென் தௌசண்ட் இந்த மேஜர் ரீபூட்டிங் எஃபர்ட் கவர்மெண்டோட எஃபர்ட்ல பத்தாயிரம் விவசாய உற்பத்தி குழுமங்கள் தொடங்குறதா திட்டம் இருக்கிறது ஸோ இந்த விவசாய உற்பத்தி குழுமங்கள் விவசாயிகளை பங்குதாரர்களா கொண்டு வந்து ஒரு கம்பெனியா பதிவு செஞ்சு அந்த கம்பெனி மூலம் விவசாயிகள் வந்து தங்களுடைய பொருட்களை இடைத்தரகர்கள் இல்லாம சந்தைக்கு நேரடியா கொண்டு போய் விற்பதி நாள் லாபம் உயர்வதற்கு கூடுதலாக லாப் லாபம் பெறுவதற்கு வாய்ப்புகள் உண்டு அப்படிங்கிறது தான் இந்த விவசாய உற்பத்தி குழுமங்கள் சொல்ற இந்த ஃபார்மர்ஸ் ப்ரொடியூசர் ஆர்கனைசேஷனோட பிரதான நோக்கம் நோக்கம் நல்லா இருக்கிறது அதனுடைய செயல்பாடுகள் அப்படின்ற போதுதான் விவசாயிகளுக்கு பிரச்சனை ஆரம்பிக்கிறது இங்கதான் வந்து எல்லாரும் சேர்ந்து அது கல்வி நிறுவனங்களா இருக்கட்டும் அல்லது அரசாங்க துறையா இருக்கட்டும் ஆய்வாளர்களா இருக்கட்டும் மற்ற தொண்டு நிறுவனங்களா இருக்கட்டும் எல்லாரும் சேர்ந்து விவசாயிக்கு எந்த வகையில உதவி செய்ய வாய்ப்பு இருக்கிறது அந்த உதவிய செய்யலன்னா நிச்சயமா விவசாயிகள் இந்த உற்பத்தி குழுமங்களை எடுத்துட்டு போக முடியாது சந்தைப்படுத்துதல் முடியாது மதிப்பு கூட்டல் வேல்யூ அடிஷன் அப்படிங்கறதெல்லாம் ஒரு லெவல்ல நடக்காது தானே இது அப்படியே போயிட்டே இருக்கும் கடந்த கடந்த ஒரு பத்து வருடங்களாவே இது போறது அந்த அளவுக்கு வந்து பெரிய ஆஹ் வளர்ச்சி ஒண்ணும் இந்த உற்பத்தி குழுமங்கள்ல நடக்கல அப்படின்னு தான் சொல்ல வேணும் இப்ப கொஞ்சம் வந்து என்னன்னா வேகமா சில முயற்சிகள் தொடங்கி நடைபெற்று கொண்டிருக்கிறது அந்த மாதிரியான சூழல்ல தான் விவசாயிகளுக்கு தங்களுடைய பொருள்களை சந்தைக்கு கொண்டு செல்லும் பொழுது எந்தெந்த வகையில் இந்த மதிப்பு கூட்டுவதற்கான வாய்ப்புகள் இருக்கிறது அது செஞ்சோம்னா அந்த விவசாயி வந்து என்னன்னா வெறுமனே தேங்காயில நெல்லுல அல்லது காய்கறியில சிறுதானியங்கள்ல நேரடியா வந்து என்னன்னா ஃபார்ம் கேட் பிரைஸ் சொல்லுவாங்க இடைத்தர்கள் வருவாரு அவர் எங்க வந்து ப்ரொடியூஸ் பண்ணி வச்சிருக்காரோ அந்த வயல்லயே ஒரு விலை சொல்லி எடுத்துட்டு போயிட்டே இருப்பாரு அந்த வேல்யூ சேன்ல பாத்தீங்கன்னா தொடர்ந்து ஆறு ஏழு பேரோட ரோல் இருக்கும் கடைசியா போய் கன்சியூமருக்கு நுகர்வோருக்கு போகும்போதுனா விவசாய வித்தத விட நூறு சதவீதம் இரநூறு சதவீதம் கூடுதலான விலை விலைக்கு வந்து கன்சியூமர் கொடுத்து வாங்க வேண்டியிருக்கும் இந்த இடங்கள்ல எங்க எல்லாம் வந்து இத தாண்டி விவசாயி நேரடியா சந்தைக்கு வர்றதுக்கு வாய்ப்பு இருக்கு அதன் மூலம் விவசாயிக்கு நுகர்வோருக்கு ரெண்டு பேருக்குமே பலனடையக்கூடிய ஒரு வாய்ப்புகளை உருவாக்க முடியும் அப்படிங்கிறது தான் இந்த வேல்யூ அடிஷன் மூலமா செய்யறதுக்கு வாய்ப்பு இருக்கா அப்படின்னு 
நிறைய பேசிட்டு இருக்கிறோம் ஆய்வுகள் நடந்துட்டு இருக்கிறது மிக எளிய முறையில வேல்யூ அடிஷன் வந்து இதுக்கு முன்ன பேசின மேடம் வந்து ரொம்ப டீடைல்டா எலாபரேட்டா ரொம்ப விரிவா நிறைய விஷயங்களை ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் லாங் லிஸ்ட் ஒரு ஒரு நீண்ட பட்டியல் கொடுத்தாங்க இதுல நம்ம விவசாயிகள் நம்ம நம்ம இப்போ ஏஎஸ்சியோட பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூல அல்லது விவசாயிகளோட வாழ்வாதாரத்தை இணைச்சு பார்க்கும்போது எந்தெந்த டெக்னாலஜி விவசாயிகளால செய்ய முடியும் அதை தேர்ந்தெடுத்து விவசாயிகளுக்கு வந்து என்னன்னா அது சம்பந்தப்பட்ட பயிற்சி திறன் மேம்பாடு இந்த கெப்பாசிட்டி பில்டிங் அது இல்லாம வந்து நிச்சயமா விவசாயால வந்து அது அது நிறைய முயற்சி எடுக்க வேண்டி இருக்கிறது அதுவும் வந்து விவசாயிகள் உண்மையிலேயே அதனால பலனடையக்கூடிய வகையில ஒரு அணுகுமுறை இருக்கிறது நிறைய ட்ரைனிங்ஸ் எல்லாம் பார்த்தோம்னா பலனடையக்கூடியதா இருக்காது ரிசல்ட் பேஸ்டா இருக்காது ஒரு மூணு மணி நேரம் ட்ரைனிங் போயிடுவாங்க கொஞ்சம் ஹேண்ட் ஹோல்ட் பண்ண வேண்டி இருக்கும் விவசாயிக்கு புரியற மாதிரி சொல்லி கொடுக்க வேண்டி இருக்கும் விவசாயிக்கு செஞ்சு காட்ட வேண்டி இருக்கிறது விவசாய வந்து நம்ம மார்க்கெட்லயே ஒரு எக்ஸ்போஷர் கொடுத்து மோட்டிவேட் பண்ண வேண்டி இருக்கும் இந்த மாதிரி பல அணுகுமுறையில தான் விவசாய வந்து ஒரு வியாபாரி ஆக்க வியாபாரி ஆவதற்கான வாய்ப்புகளை உருவாக்க முடியும் இது இது வெரி சேலஞ்சிங் இது எல்லாருக்குமே தெரியும் விவசாயி வந்து என்னன்னா மழை தண்ணி மழை பெஞ்சதுன்னா வயலுக்கு போவாரு வயல்ல உழைப்பாரு சீசன் அந்த கிராப் முடியற வரைக்கும் அறுவடை வரைக்கும் இடைத்தரகர்கிட்ட ஏற்கனவே காசு வாங்கியிருப்பாரு அல்லது இடைத்தரகர் வந்து எடுத்துட்டு போயிடுவாருன்னு வெயிட் பண்ணிட்டு இருப்பாரு அவ்வளவுதான் விவசாயியோட மனநிலை அதுதான் விவசாயியோட மனநிலை ஒரு ஒரு மைண்ட் செட் அதுதான் விவசாயிக்கு காலங்காலமா இருந்துட்டு வருது இப்ப நம்ம என்ன சொல்றோம்னா நீ வந்து வியாபாரியா ஆயிடு வியாபாரம் செய்யப்போ மார்க்கெட்டுக்கு அதனால உங்களுக்கு வந்து என்னன்னா வியாபாரத்துல பலன் கிடைக்கிறதுக்கு வாய்ப்பு இருக்கு அப்படின்னு சொல்றோம் விவசாயிக்கு அது புரியறதுக்கு வாய்ப்பு உண்டு ஆனா செயல்படுறதுக்கு திறமை இருக்கா செயல்படுறதுக்கு அவர் தயாரா இருக்காரான்றதுதான் பெரிய சேலஞ்ச் இதுக்குதான் வந்து என்ன சொல்றது மோட்டிவேஷன் கெப்பாசிட்டி பில்டிங் தென் ட்ரைனிங் இதெல்லாம் வந்து விவசாயியோட அவரோட இணைஞ்சு புரியற மாதிரி பலன் கிடைக்கிற மாதிரியான ஒரு அணுகுமுறையில போக வேண்டிய சூழ்நிலையில இருக்கு அந்த மாதிரி பார்க்கும்போது எந்த எந்த இந்த தொழில்நுட்பம் விவசாயிக்கு பயன்படக்கூடியதா இருக்குன்னு முன்ன நாம தான் தேர்ந்தெடுக்கணும் அவங்களோட பேசி அதற்கு பிறகு வந்து என்னன்னா அவங்களால அது அது அவங்க செய்யறதுக்கான தேவையான திறமைகள் வேல்யூ செயின் பத்தின பேசிக் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அது முன்ன வந்து என்னன்னா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்டேஜ் செகண்ட் ஸ்டேஜ் தேர்ட் ஸ்டேஜ் பிளேயர்ஸ் யாரெல்லாம் உள்ள வர்றாங்க ஃபைனலி வென் இட் ரீச்சஸ் த மார்க்கெட் வேர் த கன்சியூமர் கேன் டைரக்ட்லி ஹாவ் ஆக்சஸ் So, in the value chain analysis, a bit of value chain analysis, they will be able to tell them. If they are easy to get 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 easy தென்னை உற்பத்தியாளர்கள் விவசாய உற்பத்தி குழுமம் வந்து அவங்க கோகனட் ஆயில் எடுக்கிறாங்க கோகனட் ஆயில் எடுத்து லோக்கலா அங்க இருக்கிற உள்ளூர் சந்தைகளை வித்துட்டு இருக்காங்க அதுல அவங்களுக்கு வந்து என்னன்னா சில சமயம் வந்து என்னன்னா தேவையான அளவுக்கு வந்து ஆயில் இருந்ததுன்னா ஸ்டாக் நிக்கிறது மார்க்கெட்ல போறது இல்ல சோ இதுக்கு வந்து என்னன்னா கொஞ்சம் உள்ளூர் சந்தையை பத்தின புரிதல்கள் அவங்களுக்கு இருக்கணும் அதுக்குதான் வந்து ஒரு ஒரு சிம்பிள் இப்ப மேபிள் இப்பதான் முடிச்சாங்க ஒரு ஒரு எளிமையான வியாபார திட்டம் மதுரை மாவட்டத்துக்குள்ளே விற்கணும்னா எவ்வளவு எண்ணையா நம்ம விற்கலாம் சி அப்சார்பிங் கெப்பாசிட்டின்னு சொல்ற அந்த தேவை வந்து ஒரு ஹண்ட்ரட் லிட்டர்ஸ் இருக்குன்னா நம்ம இரநூத்தி ஐம்பது லிட்டர்ஸ் வச்சுட்டு இருந்தோம்னா போகாது சோ முன்ன வந்துன்னா அந்த புரிதல் இருக்கணும் மார்க்கெட் பத்தின புரிதல் இருக்கணும் அதுக்கு நம்ம வந்து என்னன்னா ரொம்ப ஐஐஎம் அங்க மா அந்த மாதிரியான பெரிய எலிட் இன்ஸ்டிடியூஷன்ல படிச்சவங்க வந்து பிசினஸ் பிளான் எல்லாம் போட தேவையில்லை இவங்களுக்கு புரியற மாதிரி ஒரு பார்ட்டிசிபேட்ரி டிஸ்கஷன் பார்ட்டிசிபேட்ரி பிளான் அப்ரோச்ல அவங்களுக்கு புரியற மாதிரி ஒரு சின்ன பிசினஸ் பிளான் போட சொன்னது அதை அவங்க போட்டிருக்காங்க இதுல வந்து என்னன்னா கம்ஃபர்டபுள் ஜோன்ல இருப்பாங்க சோ அவங்கள விவசாய வியாபாரியா கொண்டுட்டு போகும்போது 
போய் சிக்கலான ஒரு சூழ்நிலையில விட்டுறக்கூடாது நிறைய நிறைய எஃப்பிஓஸ்க்கு அது நடந்துடுச்சு அதனால தான் நான் சொல்றேன் இட்ஸ் நல்ல அலர்ட் ஸோ ஹவு மச் தே கேன் சூ நம்ம வாயில் எவ்வளவு கடிக்க முடியுமோ அவ்வளவுதான் எடுக்கணும் அதை பத்தின புரிதல் நமக்கு இருக்கணும் ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி வந்துன்னா ஒரு எளிமையான வியாபார திட்டத்தின் அடிப்படையில அவங்க செய்யலாம் இதுல உள்ளூர் சந்தையை முன்னோ டார்கெட் பண்றது தான் அறிவார்த்தமான நடைமுறைக்கு உகந்தது இம்மிடியட்டா வந்து என்னன்னா ரீஜனல் மார்க்கெட் இன்டர்நேஷனல் மார்க்கெட் நேஷனல் மார்க்கெட் அதெல்லாம் இருக்கட்டும் நடந்ததுன்னா வெல் அண்ட் குட் ரொம்ப நல்லது பட் உள்ளூர் சந்தைக்கு அவங்களால வந்து எந்த அளவுக்கு பூர்த்தி செய்ய முடியும் அவங்களுடைய நோக்கமே உள்ளூர் சந்தைக்கு உள்ளூர் சந்தையினுடைய தேவையை கொடுக்கறதுக்கான ப்ராடக்டா இருக்கணும் அந்த அளவும் குவான்டிட்டியும் அது சம்பந்தப்பட்டதா இருந்தா நல்லது இப்ப ஈவன் இந்த போஸ்ட் பேண்டமிக் நாட் போஸ்ட் பேண்டமிக் இட்ஸ் கோயிங் ஆன் இந்த பேண்டமிக் சூழல்லையே இன்க்ளூடிங் யூஎஸ் எவ்ரிபடி இஸ் நவு டாக்கிங் அபவுட் லோக்கல் வேல்யூ செயின் அனாலிசிஸ் லோக்கல் வேல்யூ செயின் மெத்தட் ஸோ முன்ன இந்த லாஜிஸ்டிக்ஸ்ல வந்த பிரச்சனை நவ் இட் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி அ ப்ராப்ளம் நம்ம இன்னும் டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் ஒன்னு address your local markets think of local supply chain and products which can go in the local market processing nareya processing in the previous lecture la pathina nareya processing units involve irukku wherever possible processing units in the madipu kootra and the chinna chinna urpatti nirvanangal adha vandu angaye vekka mudiyuma nu paakalam certain things we cannot do locally adukku vera pakkam polam but local ah panna mudiyiradhu local ah pannalama indha maadhiriyana oru thinking process la poga vendi irukku so local market is the first target for the producer organizations and value added products alla avangalukku vandena indha mari enna ya vandena konjam oru level la vandena marudiyum they started producing more nareya kudukka mudiyunanga oru oru link chennai la irundhu kondu vandu kudutathu இவங்களோட எண்ணெய் எப்படின்னா ஆர்கானிக் அப்படின்னு சொல்ல முடியாது அதுக்கு ஒரு ப்ராசஸ் இருக்கு இல்லைங்களா லேபிள் எடுக்கணும் தென் ஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் அந்த ப்ராக்டிசஸ் இருக்கணும் மானிட்டரிங் இருக்கணும் தென் ஓன்லி யூ கேன் லேபிள் டெஸ் ஆர்கானிக் சம் ஆர்கனைசேஷன் ஒரு ஒரு அங்கீகரிக்கப்பட்ட நிறுவனம் வந்து அவங்களுக்கு இது இயற்கை முறையில் தயாரிக்கப்பட்ட பொருள்னு சொல்லணும் அந்த ஆர்கானிக் லேபிளிங் வாங்கிறது அது இன்னொரு இன்வெஸ்ட்மெண்ட் இருக்கிறது அது ஒரு பெரிய வழிமுறைகள் இருக்கிறது ஆனா இது வந்து என்னன்னா most of the thing they said organic podradilla adanal adu vandha enna na yerkai murai vivasayathil edutha thanai appdi sonnanga adu oru anugulamana vishayam advantage second enna na idu in the sekkil edukkaradu andha mari cold pressed nu solla mudiyadhu it is wooden pressed andha maadhiriyana method la edukkaradunal it is not like refined it's not refined and the mariana enna illa endradanal idukku or value irukku market value irukku endradanal or link chennai la irundhu vandu kudutathu rendu moonu murai vandhu ivanga supply pannanga avangalukku vandha enna 100 100 letter eduthu ponanga local avum ivanga kudutite irundanga then next level pombodhu avanga vandha na scale ivula irundana dhaan naanga inga vandu eduthu poradanal engalukku payan padum appdi solittu but price wise local ah kudukravangala oda because direct ah chennai மதுரையில இருந்து சென்னைக்கு போனதுனால இந்த ஸ்ப்ரெட் இந்த வேல்யூ செயின்ல வந்து ரெண்டு மூணு இன்டர்மீடியட் லிங்க் இல்லாம போறதுனால தே ஆஃபர்ட் பெட்டர் பிரைஸ் நல்ல விலையை கொடுத்தாங்க ஆனா இவங்களால ஸ்கேல் கொடுக்க முடியாது ஆயிரம் லிட்டர் கேட்டாங்க மாஸ் இந்த எஃபர்ட் ரெண்டு போச்சு இவங்களால தொடர்ந்து சப்ளை பண்ண முடியல எதுக்கு சொல்ல வரேன்னா நடைமுறையில இவங்களோட வேல்யூ ஆடட் ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் இது வந்து என்னன்னா இயற்கை முறையில செஞ்ச கிடைச்ச ப்ராடக்ட்ல இருந்து எடுத்த எண்ணெய கொடுக்கும் போது கொஞ்சம் பெட்டர் பிரைஸ் கிடைக்கிறது நல்ல விலை கிடைக்கிறது மார்க்கெட் டைப்பும் கிடைக்கிறது பட் ஆனா இவங்களுக்கு அந்த பிளான் சரியா இல்லாதனால அதை கொண்டுட்டு போக முடியாம போயிடுச்சு சோ இந்த மாதிரியான நிறைய பிரச்சனைகள் வருது value addition is one when the farmers trying to get 
the benefits of value addition the farmer need to develop farmers need to prepare themselves to really operate the whole value chain process adha konjam aac mariana kalurigal eduthu senjada adu payan kadaikkaradhukana vaippu irukku value addition is an opportunity yes value addition definitely as a concept if it is taken to the fpos the farmers uh, mobilized farmers platform and if it is converted into a marketable product then definitely farmers can get better price the income level can go up but whether the farmers can able to do that whether the farmers or farmers have the ability to really act as a trader to reach the market and effectively sell the product adu or periya challenging ana issues are issue a irukirathu nariya fpos ku vandha indha prachana irukirathu so indha maadhiriyana soolnalaiyila two points i want to insist one is f yes you pick up the value addition the the products which can be easily added value by the farming community very pragmatic very pragmatic oil extract pannalam allathu vandha enna and the alund varra and punnaakku kondu vekkaradhukana enna vaippu irukku paakkalam allathu vera vandha endha vagaiyila farmers vandha idu selala grading just by grading avanga indha thanai vasaiyila senjaanga kumbai local markets ku nalla thenga medium range then adukku keela irukra quality en kudutanga andha mari grading indha mari vandhana where farmers can manage the value addition process you to start with andha mari vandhana oru selected value addition ideas eduthittu then they should have they should said they should be helped to develop a business plan so then only it sustains illana nam yerkanave panna experiment mari when the the need goes up then they are not able to cope up then the tie up gets the gets delinked so the link market link is not sustaining so upon the forward link unless until they ensure the market linkage forward linkage is a sustainable link then it is the risk is reduced the farmers can able to continue the market if the market linkage collapses the farmers will face a sometimes a disaster they can't really manage the, the stock they have their own so they should really think about the sustainable market linkage adukku enna na indha maadhiriyana business plan is very essential it it will help them to know from where the capital flows it will help them to know how much they can produce and also ensured forward linkages ensured in the sense not to some certain extent i can say yes there is a buyer his need is this much he can come and take so in the madri in the vishayangala adipadai vishayangala elimiya or farmer purinjittu adha seiyaradhukana and the vaippu and the business plan erpadithi kodu we are working with around 50 to 60 farmers producer organizations the first thing i am i am talking to them is one is we call it corporate literacy or 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 fpo la irukra farmer than or shareholder abindrad eppadi purinjikara this not like not a membership he has contributed for the capital and this is a business profit making company as a shareholder what is your role as a shareholder what you do know what you what you should know about the board what what is your understanding about the company in the mari corporate literacy abindra or basic why cooperatives primary cooperative societies failed in our state in almost all the states because they don't really know they don't really feel that they are member of a cooperatives kadan vaangrathukku povum kadan kattuvom illa thallapudi aagum indha mindset thoda irukkan the same mindset cannot work in the fpo context they should really be a part of a business form and irukku nam corporate literacy second is no business plan அது 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 இல்லாம தான் நிறைய பியோஸ் போயிட்டு இருக்கு அது இல்லாம தான் நிறைய வேல்யூ அடிஷன் process நடந்துட்டு இருக்கு so that is a major uh, problem why this fpos are not successfully running the business and why this value addition concept is not picking up in 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 most of the cases 
they try fail try and there is no sustainability there is no continuous success etc so business plan is very important third or third one is as i said yes now you always try with your local supply try to understand the local supply chain local outlets you can be also have have one of your own outlets then you think of the regional then you think of national international if it is required based on the the amount of produce you have so one should really be very practical very clear about the understanding about this market a bit of market analysis will help them so without like you know having a bit of holistic understanding where the capital what is the farmer produces his capacity to act as a trader the capital flow market analysis then you know converting into kind of successful business idu konjam irukkanum indha mari anavaru or thorough understanding is essential so we can see the success of value addition process and as we have been all telling the farmer should get double triple the income level so there is a possibility to happen that keeping in mind all its points in 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 mind to and the the kind of support farmers need to convert the ideas into practice so idoda nan mudichikira this is some of the idea to this group related to value addition where you contextualize your value addition in the <clears throat> A rural context or in the farm family context is basically help them to get increased income so that it will lead to livelihood security of the farming family so thank you very much a a ac or acpr and aac for this opportunity and mabel if there are questions you can transfer it later i can answer to those questions yes, thank you very much uh, thank you sir Ma'am, actually, yeah. the discussion session mostly most of them they want your PPT, they want to share your PPT like to their they want their PPT to be sent to their mail address. So that we'll do if you just send your PPT to our mail, we'll sure, forward. Sure. Uh, yeah, we'll forward and may, there are many comments in the Zoom chat box and also in the YouTube link chat box that uh, the inform uh, session was quite informative and interesting. Even you can just go through that. Uh, chat session ma'am okay sure sure thank you Please so much send the recording of our youtube to your mail so that you can okay. even uh, have it for your uh, uh, future use so thank you sir tamilolli sir thank you very much so it's time towards the end of the session so i'll just uh, move uh, towards uh, uh, proposing the vote of thanks so at the end of this international webinar i would like to record my wholehearted thanks to our Uh, director father uh, reverend father godfrey rufus and our executive uh, father reverend father loss for just continue giving their continuous support to the entire acpr team as a whole we have just worked for this international webinar to come this is the first international webinar which is being hosted by the acpr team so my second secondly i would like to thank Mrs. Purnima Jay Shagran of the Assistant Professor of the Food Science Department of the American College Madurai, because she was the one uh, who just uh, gave me this, uh, show the way, like how to just go for this uh, towards this resource person, uh, Dr. Anto Cordelia, ma'am, because uh, Anto, ma'am, was her uh, staff during her MSc program. So my sincere thanks to Purnima. for uh, helping me in this uh, getting this resource person for this webinar ma'am anto ma'am our research yeah. resource person i'm i'm very much thankful to you ma'am because i i was just contacting you in a very short span of time so immediately you accepted and uh, to our topic also it was not left to your choice because i just gave the topic and uh, very short span of time you were able to just give us a informative session so thank you very much ma'am and so ma'am for uh, sparing your uh, time with us amidst your busy schedule thank you very much ma'am and uh, thank you sir our uh, coal consultant dr tamiloli sir and our partners l3f partners vdl and rsda chinivasan sir 
thank you for being with us in all our activities in all our webinars and all our uh, workshops you are just giving us a uh, wholehearted support so thank you our partners too so next are uh, my wholehearted thanks to few friendly colleagues of our uh, uh, aac who just always help uh, help the acpr team in all our activities especially to the department of rds our assistant Prof professor reverend father sebastian maimeraj and mrs pandeshwari of the department of rds were always with us with the the acpr team and from the department of history dr jenifa who always help us in all our activities in just uh, just scheduling our activities and uh, just going through our invitation or certificate and lending their helpy, uh, helping hand always. So as a team of ACPR from the director, executive director, our program coordinators, myself and Mr. Anthony Raj sir, and the program assistants, uh, Mr. Edwin and Mr. Sarat Kumar, I would like to submit my wholehearted thank thankfulness for the entire uh, participants, whole lot of participants who have come here for this international webinar to make this webinar a successful one. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mabel. This was a wonderful opportunity for me, and I'm very happy that you're doing a lot of extension work. And whatever we say, please take it to the field. Uh, maybe you can introduce, you can do some research on these kind of uh, products, and then when you find the method and other things, you can just uh, take them to the farmers. So I'll be very glad if more youngsters uh, take up this kind of uh, uh, business and venture into all this and be a successful entrepreneurs. Thank you so much to the entire team as well as the management uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you one and all. Thank you, ma'am. And the feedback link will be posted now in the Zoom chat box and the YouTube link also. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, in Panila, Ah, in Panila, sir. Okay. Sir, and the link post Ah, Yes, thank you.